All right. All right. Here we go. They are really getting back into data centers. Something really surprising that they've been able to do that. Recently saw some market share growth there. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much, Walter. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Lisa, for coming to uh, Computex. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Thank you. All right. Good morning, Taipei. Good morning. It is absolutely wonderful to be here in Taipei, uh, opening up the uh, Computex uh, press conference. And I have to really thank um, the entire Computex committee, uh, particularly TITRA and TCA, for uh, inviting AMD to our first ever keynote here at Computex. It is an incredible place where we have our industry partners and all of the members of the press together, but I'd also like to welcome the global audience that is watching all over the world That's on true, live cloud stream. gaming catches on. We truly on. appreciate you joining us today, joining AMD, joining Computex, and you know, Walter said something interesting. He said it was our first time at Computex. Actually, AMD comes to Computex every single year. <laughs> And we come to Computex every single year because this is the heart of the ecosystem in computing. But this is the first time we are officially invited to be a keynote here at Computex. So again, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, That's, that is a correction. So Walter mentioned that as a company, we actually celebrated our 50th anniversary actually just a few weeks ago on May 1st. And it's a big milestone for every technology company, and certainly a big milestone for AMD. And if you look at the history of AMD, we've always had this vision. Our vision is to push technology to its limits. And it is all about industry first and introducing new technologies that haven't been introduced before. If you take a look at the first gigahertz CPU, that was introduced by AMD or the first gigahertz GPU that was introduced by AMD. And more recently, we've really been focused on innovation in high performance computing. So we introduced the first high-end desktop processor at 32 cores to really revolutionize the industry. And just earlier this year, we introduced the first seven nanometer GPU. So lots of lots of technology, but as exciting as the last 50 years were, the next 50 years for technology is much, much more exciting. There's a tremendous demand for computing, and we really see two key areas. It's the demand for better experiences, so it's all of the devices that each one of us has, hundreds of devices that we interact with at work or play or through um, our daily lives, we want each one of those devices to be better. We want them to be more responsive. We want them to understand what we want, and that requires tremendous computing power. On the other side, we also have these hundreds of devices giving us lots and lots of data. And what are you gonna do with all that data? We want that data to be smarter, we want that data to help us make decisions, and we want that data to help us make our lives more easy. And that is really the huge demand for more compute on the other side of the infrastructure. Now, at AMD, we have one goal in mind. 
Our one goal is to lead the industry. Six and that gigahertz. requires <laughs> that we think very differently about how to push the envelope in high performance computing. And since we're here amongst our friends in Taiwan who control really so much of the ecosystem, it is a tremendous time to be in high performance markets, really. If you look across the data center, or you look across gaming, or you look across PCs, all of these are growth areas for us and areas where new technologies can make a huge, huge difference. But one of the things about being in semiconductors is you have to make big bets. Big bets are what tell you, are you going to win or are you not going to win? And at AMD, we have been making some big bets. Oh, Our oh, big bets oh. are around high performance leadership. And high performance leadership is Love not you <laughs> one or two things. It's really a series of decisions that were made three to five years ago that position us yeah, sorry about the for lighting, this year in 2019. And if you take a look at some of those bets, the first is in process technology. We've chosen to be at the leading edge of process technology. We want the best that in the industry has to offer. And frankly, that's in 2019, that's seven nanometer process technology. And we are extremely proud of partnering with TSMC oh. because they do have the best technology in the industry. The second bet is around high performance cores. Thank the you, cores Aaron. are really the engines of our products. And you want those engines to be as modern and capable as possible. And so today, we're going to talk to you about our Zen 2 cores. And we're going to talk to you about our Navi products. And that gives you oh, an idea there of you our go. high performance engines there that it will is. power the next decade. And the third piece is we have to put all of these things smartly together. And it doesn't mean just building large pieces of silicon. It really means putting the best technology in the best silicon, in the best package, in the best system. And that's what we call our triplet architecture, because our triplet architecture allows us to build an incredible set of products. Now, I told you Computex is an extremely exciting uh, time for us. And this, this morning, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. We're going to give you a brief update on where we are with our data center products, <laughs> the second generation Rome. We're going to talk a bit about Navi. How many of you are interested in Navi? Yeah. We're going to preview Navi for you because it's an incredible product family I knew it. for gaming. That's what and I then, figured they would do. Third generation AMD Ryzen CPUs. Okay. More than a preview. We're going to have a fun morning talking about where technology can really go. Ooh. So with that, let's start in the data center, please. All right, so this is going to be epic. With a Y. This will hopefully give us a taste of what we can expect from Ryzen as well. Hopefully. All right. So look, the data center is really incredibly exciting. And what's exciting about it is the data center really helps us solve the world's toughest and most important challenges. And when you think about some of the most important scientific problems in the world, or you think about high performance computing, no, don't or let you your battery die. Tremendous growth in the cloud or all of the focus on machine learning, all of these things need lots and lots of computing horsepower. And that's what it is we've been focused on. Two years ago, we introduced 
the Epic processor family. Epic was meant to really bring oh, a new era you, in the data center. We wanted to change the rules. We wanted to allow people to use single socket or dual socket uh, systems, depending on their workloads. And with that, we have seen tremendous adoption in Epic over the last two years. Today, we have more than 60 AMD Epic platforms in production. And if you look globally at the largest cloud environments, many of them are using AMD, including Microsoft Azure, including Amazon, including Baidu, Tencent, and many, many more. We have more than 50 AMD Epic Cloud instances in production right now. But I talked to you about solving the world's toughest problems, and it's actually something that we're very proud of. We're engineers. We like to solve problems. And just a few weeks ago, we were very, very honored to be selected for probably one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging supercomputer in the world. AMD was selected by Oak Ridge National Laboratories and the US Department of Energy together with Cray to build a one and a half exaflop supercomputer. That's one and a half exaflops. Yep, I discussed that. That is really impressive. It's using a future generation of AMD Epic, and it's using a future generation of our AMD Radeon Instinct. And the reason we love it is because we know it's going to be incredibly challenging. But our goal in 2021 is to have the world's fastest supercomputer on AMD technology. And frankly, we're going to learn an incredible amount about how to build computers. But more importantly, we are going to help all of the scientists in the world solve some of these tough challenges. So just take a look at what people do with these supercomputers, please. We get excited about answers. In the end, to us, the technology is how we get to our answers, and that's what excites us. The evolution of AMD seems to be on task with how research computing moves forward. They help us reinvent how we're doing our science. High performance computing is an incredibly important market because it's central to product development, to scientific research, to natural resource exploration, and now more so to the emerging area of machine intelligence. We believe that supercomputing is at the forefront of computer architecture, and the innovations and technology that's driven into systems wind up defining the standard for the data center. Building a supercomputer doesn't change the world in and of itself. It's only when we put it in the hands of scientists and engineers that they can use that system to change the world. Frontier is going to change every aspect of our life, and we'll be better for it. The bacteria I study have no cure, so detecting them quickly and carefully is really important for um, preventing disease as they cause millions of dollars in damage every year. I'm always fighting to get more and more CPU time on the cluster, and with the Epic server, I'm able to run a lot more jobs faster, and this is really key for getting my research done in a reasonable amount of time. Our engineers are proud that our technology will be used to help analyze and progress the analysis of advanced weather modeling, of advanced disease research, understanding molecular uh, genetic disorders. Seeing the science actually get somewhere and actually be able to change the world in a positive way is how we're using this technology and that's what keeps the scientists going. Is that exciting or what, in terms of what you can do with the technology? So with that, let me bring you to our first announcement of the morning. You saw what we could do in supercomputing capabilities. And what we're announcing today with Microsoft is we are bringing that supercomputing capability of scale into the Azure cloud. And the idea here is that we have the ability to have the largest cluster of oh, Epic you, CPUs, Daniel. over 10,000 CPUs, that will really allow you to simulate very, very large tasks. And our first customer has already said that they have been able to get over 7,500 times speed up 
by using the Azure Cloud with Epic compared to what they could do before. So I think that's pretty amazing, huh? Now, I also want to give you an update on our second generation Epic processor, Rome. Rome is an incredible product. It's built on seven nanometer technology. It's up to 64 Zen 2 cores. It has incredible compute and I.O. and bandwidth capability because of the way we architected this device. And when you look at what that means, what we see in our labs and in our customers' labs is we see up to twice the performance, 2x the performance per socket compared to our previous generation. And on floating point workloads, we see up to 4x because of the floating point capability that we've put into Rome. Now, we're very, very excited about how Rome is doing in the labs, and we want to show you some of how Rome is doing here at Computex. So for that, let me invite Forrest Nord to the stage. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Good morning. Forrest runs our data center business, and Forrest, let's give our audience a preview of how Rome is doing. Fantastic. Well, at CES back in January, uh, Lisa showed the world the first performance demo on Rome with a single Rome processor outperforming what was, at that time, uh, a dual socket, top of stack, best system <coughs> from our competitor. And that was great, but today I'm going to be showing you that same simulation on two Rome processors outperforming the top of line Cascade Lake 8280 uh, processor, dual socket from Intel, just announced a month ago. And Rome, in a dual socket to dual socket comparison, over twice as fast on molecular dynamic simulations. Yeah, if there's anything that benefits from a ton of cores, it is definitely going to be Forrest, data centers. Do you want to talk about what those nanoseconds were down there? The nanoseconds were we are simulating a protein that's part of HDL uh, floating around in the bloodstream. And it's critically important to understand how it interacts with other chemicals in your body. And that simulation was simulation of nanoseconds of that progression of the molecule, 92,000 atoms. And th it's such an incredibly complicated thing that even the speed of EPIC can only uh, simulate about 20 nanoseconds a day, but that's twice as much as on Cascade Lake. <laughs> so twice the performance on Rome than our previous generation, yep, twice a lot the of room for improvement of the 8280M, which is a $10,000 processor. And we have twice as many platforms in development that will be ready so that customers, most importantly, can get the power of Rome into their hands, into their labs, into their businesses as soon as possible. And Forrest, when are we launching this product? We're launching this product next quarter. Thanks, Lisa. All right.